I don't know if this is a house or not, but it's pretty color and some of its design elements caught my fancy. Just as I hit town walking down from the Muros or Moors Castle. So here's a town fountain that actually is used and gets used. All these folks have bottles of water they're going to fill up and take up to their homes where perhaps they don't even have drinking water. Here's a somewhat interesting building with its uh, conical tower peak in this interesting facade. Gracias. Interesting tile work on the outside of the building. This on the outside of the restaurant. All of this you could buy. There's nothing original. About this, I'm sure. It's the National Palace. We'll go into that. The salads at those restaurants that serve the uh, tour bus people. And it's almost three times what it would cost in uh, Lisbon to have a salad. This is called the Swan Room because the king or the queen had a particular affection for swans. And here we see them in different poses, apparently with different, not even now, I could say different bracelets or whatever around their neck, necklaces. Simple room, it's still used for formal occasions. Bowls in the form of different barnyard animals. The ceiling looks different, doesn't it? These towers are actually remarkable chimneys that <clears throat> suck a profound amount of air out of the kitchen. Let's just get rid of the smoke as well as to uh, buy the food for the fireplace, I guess. This is apparently their water fountain. Whether this space filled up with water or not, I don't know. Seems like a cool idea. So this is the magpie room. I'll pan the bottom up. I'll pan this lower part first. And then on the ceiling are the magpies. And he put these up here to point out to his royal court that he knew about all the gossiping about his extramarital affairs, apparently. And the Portuguese around the ma each magpie says for good. Rick uh, suggests this is humor, but I don't see the humor in it. I'm not sure what it is. It was a hu humorous rebuke of the gossiping, but I don't see it. What is interesting is how they attempt to get a Muslim um, sense out of the decor, even though the decor is simply an applique of tiles. Now these tiles are from Spain and considered to be some of the finest tiles in Portugal. They were not Portuguese tiles, even though that became a great artistic passion, action passion for the Portuguese. This is a pretty little cabinet. You notice how it's two parts. Each can be carried by those handles. Maybe it was used for traveling. Here, kind of a forerunner of our um, roll top desk, having all the compartments. I say forerunner. It may not have been, who knows. But anyway, it has all those compartments. Notice that the bed has little paintings inside of each of those gold frames, if you will. Let's see what he was looking at. If it was a modern day, of course, those would all be playmates. 
of the month with the uh, prime playmate of the last decade in the center, of course. And being king, well, <clears throat> just imagine the time it took to carve the borders, not to mention the center part, which would be relatively easy compared to the borders. I would think the difficulty was laying this thing out first. And are those components, or were they all one piece of wood? My guess is they were components, like frames. I'm guessing this was some kind of navigational tool, and that that ring represents the equator. You can see the meridian lines. And if we look closely at that point, there's some detail inscribed on there, so it may have been the current Earth as they knew it to be at some point in time. We'll take a quick look at these individual panels. This course looks like a hunting season scene. Rick says this is a renaissance bed. And these are pictures of King Sebastian, who at 24, having someone having chased the Moors out of, of Europe, he decided to chase them into Africa. And at 24, was never heard of again. And is so mythologically presumed to be coming back at some point in time, like the second coming of Christ, or the white person coming to the Aztecs. And these tiles are apparently considered to be the first tiles of Portuguese manufacture. I mean, the first of any significance, I suspect, is what Rick means. So this might have been breaking new ground from the king's viewpoint. This is the mermaid room in the same decor as the king's bedroom. And it was his, apparently, uh, wardrobe room. I noticed the slightly different treatment of the uh, door borders in the form of a uh, mesh. Julius Caesar room is named after the 16th century Flemish tapestry depicting a scene from the life of the Roman leader, apparently. Looks like wooden ceilings that are painted with a applied molding, nothing out of the ordinary there. This is the patio of Diana Courtyard, quite small because as Rick points out, this was as much a fortress as it was a, uh, a home. This room called the Crown Chamber was apparently a privy or bathroom, or at least it adjoined it. There's a barrel vault, everything probably wood and painted. The decor is ships, which when it was brand new was probably pretty fun to look at, state of the art. This is the Prince's Garden, probably named after their two sons. It's very pretty. I wonder what all that is beyond the wall. Notice that there are our doorways, it looks like, in the wall. Here, pretty desk. The desk folds up to close, if you will, and secure the individual drawers. Let's take a look at some of those pictures up close. And the inlay work. An impressive entrance into this next room, loaded with tiles. Here, a Flemish on tapestry whose main theme seems to be the amulary in the center there of these panels. Okay, this is called the stag room for the very obvious reason that most of these decorative panels that dominate are of stags. But the layout is of this design, that's the king's coat of arms, then progressively downward in layers are the coat of arms of other most important supporting families. And then we get down here, the lower tier, are lesser but noble families with their coat of arms that supported the king. Except for in this section here, 
you'll notice a blank. And that's for a niche for a noble family that did not support the king, and this is to memorialize that. Okay, I'll just pan down. And these 18th century tiles were designed to replace, be a substitute for, the tapestry is a historically decorated wall. This tapestry is interesting because it wraps the corner. Notice how the dogs are used to attack the stag. And it would appear that the hunter uses his sword or pike or whatever you want to call that pointy thing there to kill once the stag has been controlled by the dogs. Yet here hunters are carrying rifles. So they had that uh, device also. Here this uh, tapestry tile is interesting because the dancers are off to the left but the musicians are on the right side of the corner in the main. That seems to be a clever adaptation of this corner concept and how these characters have been assigned the straining task of holding up this tableau of tile. Now here rather than suffering anguish this fellow and his compatriot seem to be quite happy with their plight. And this character and his companion seem to almost be asleep as they support. Here we see a bear being killed as it attempts to attack both the horse and that rider. Hopefully once in a while they won. And here a couple of fellows apparently quite happily joined together to support this panel. And here this character seems to be interested in what's going on in his panel above him. As does the little critter there. For Alfonso I, this served as a bedchamber and a prison for six years. Not sure what that story is. Notice the tile work here. Apparently a mix of muslin and uh, other tiles. These are interesting models, but of what exactly, I don't know. If they were true buildings, that must be interesting. Certainly reminiscent of the Bacoda, pagodas, but it's not that. But it could be. It's reminiscent of the pagodas, pagodas. But no, I've never seen a pagoda that many stories. Again, a wooden ceiling, dome, vault but with more elaborate uh, overlay, if you will, of wood, it looks like, all of it painted. Barrel vault. This is a wood-structured barrel vault with a fair amount of filigree on top. Built in the 14th century and continued construction and so forth through the 15th century. This is called the Arab Room, probably because of these graphics, this optical illusion kind of graphics. You'll notice that border is what we saw in the king's bedroom. And this had a fountain in it for some reason. Notice again, unless I pointed out, not pointed out, the rather uh, subdued ceilings that are of wood and then painted. This is characteristic of them, all except the ones that I've shown that were not. This is the privy chamber of the king to which only he had access and probably a retinue of those who took care of the rituals of the king, although I don't think they were in any way at all as elaborate as 
as Louis XIV saw it. I thought the king found it offensive to have those knobs there where he could bang his feet and his legs when he got out of bed occasionally. This is an interesting chair because it looks like it'd be uncomfortable, number one, to sit and number two, only one person could even though it's big enough for two. And if the two were there, you're going to have one side of each of your backs poking through those back portions. But, interesting. So this is the kitchen, which is probably the most interesting thing in this building. Um, principally because of these towering chimney flues, if you will, designed not to take the smoke just from one chimney, but from all of these ovens here and catapult it outside. Here were large ovens or baker stoves, I'm not sure what they would be. Ovens, I think, for baking and that sort of thing. Here would be what we would call stoves today. I guess the wood was stacked underneath. I don't know where the firebox is from those. <clears throat> but anyway, the flames would have roared up underneath those pots. Look closer there, you can see that the top there of that one is broken, and that was where right underneath what would have been a pot. So apparently, the fire was in these little holes, which is really surprising. First time we've seen this, number one, the spits that an animal would be skewered onto, and then a rack for holding it. Now where the large fireplace is to hold that spit, I don't know. Here behind us was perhaps their source of water. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if there was a large fireplace or fire thing right here in the middle somehow. This was the main hall of the residence called Manueline probably because it's got such over-the-top art deco chandelier and perhaps some of the other decorations. So now we're entering the Royal Garden remembering that this was as much a fort as it was a, a home. And a cute, probably a facsimile of a washerwoman. Notice that it's got the washing uh, board in there. I wonder if the king or his family didn't go skinny dipping in this little pool here occasionally. Certainly the kids had to ride the lion, I would. special life privilege that these people had, the zenith of their era. It appears that we can go up here. I can't see with this stupid thing on this camera uh, what I'm looking at because the sun's so bright. There's the town center. So we'll wander off to the right here, I guess, too. There are just narrow spaces for gardens here because of the nature of this building. We'll follow this little stair and see if it takes us to a more interesting place. And here next door is an abandoned building. Here another little tiny garden space. Between the castle and this abandoned building on my left is this street through this pretty entranceway to it. You wonder what the history of that would be. Was it really part of this uh, National Palace? Here it's queued all along this wall are places that two people could sit. What is that building in the center? How strange that what might be a residence with such magnificent ocean views, as well as of the countryside about, would be totally abandoned.
This is pretty. I think it's a house. I don't really know. Oh, it looks like it's for sale, whatever it is. There's a little section there. Another entrance to the same building, it looks like. You pass Lawrence's restaurant before you get to the Quinta de Regular Air. Here on the other side of town, uh, going towards my hostel, another uh, very active, I would think, watering. Here's a pretty little spot that these folks have chosen for a little impromptu 